guys, Cornell's back. Today I'm going to read Hebrews 11 to 13, Psalm 48, and Proverbs 21. Let's get started. Hebrews 11. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. That is what the people of long ago we praised for. We have faith. So we understand that everything was made when God commanded it. That's why we believe, that's why we too, we believe that when we, what we see was not made out of what could be seen. Abel had faith. So he brought to God a better offering than Cain did. Because of his faith, Abel was praised as a godly man. God said good things about his offerings. Because of his faith, Abel, Abel still speaks. He speaks even though he is dead. Enoch had faith, so he was taken from his life. He didn't die. He couldn't be found because God had taken away him away. Before God took him, Enoch was praised as one who pleased God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Those who come to God must believe that he exists, and they must believe that he rewards those who look to him. Noah had faith, so he built an ark to save his family. He built it because of his great respect to God. God had warned him about things that could not yet be seen. Because of his faith, Noah shared the word that it was guilty. Because of his faith, he was considered right with God. Abraham had faith. So he obeyed God. God called him to go to a place he would later receive as his own. So he went. He did it even though he didn't know where he was going. Because of his faith, he made his home in the land God had promised him. Abraham was like an outsider in, the strange, in a strange country. He lived there in tents. So did Isaac and Jacob. They received the same promise he did. Abraham was looking forward to the city that has foundations. He was waiting for the city that God planned and built. And Sarah had faith. So God made it possible for her to become a mother. She became a mother even though she was too old to have children. But Sarah believed that the God who made the promise was faithful. Abraham was past the time when he could have children. But many children came from that one man. There were as many as the stars in the sky. There were as many as the grains of sand on the seashore. No one could count them. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They didn't receive the things God had promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a long way off. They openly said that they were outsiders and strangers on earth. People who say things like that show that they are looking for a country of their own. What if they had been thinking of our country they had left? Then they could have returned to it. Instead, they longed for a better country. They wanted a heavenly one. So God is pleased when they call him their God. In fact, he has prepared a city for them. Abraham had faith. So when God tested him, Abraham offered Isaac a sacrifice. Offered Isaac as a sacrifice. Abraham had held on tightly to the promises, but he was about to he was about to offer his one and only son. God has said to him, "Your family line will continue through Isaac." Even so, Abraham was going to offer him up. Abraham did this because he believed that God could raise him from the dead. In a way, he did receive Isaac back from death. Isaac had faith, so he blessed Jacob and Esau. He told them what was ahead of for them. Jacob had faith, so he blessed each of Joseph's sons. He blessed them when he was dying. Because of his faith, he worshipped God. Jacob worshipped as he leaned on the top of his walking stick. Joseph had faith. So he spoke to the people of Israel about how they would leave Egypt someday. When his death was near, he spoke about where to bury his bones. Moses' parents had faith. 
So they hid him for three months after he was born. They saw he was a special child. They were not afraid of the king's command. Moses had faith, so he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That happened after he had grown up. He chose to be treated badly together with the people of God. He chose not to dis enjoy sin's pleasures. They only last for a short time. He suffered shame because of Christ. He thought it had great value. Moses considered it better than the riches of Egypt. He was looking ahead to his reward. Because of his faith, Moses left Egypt. It wasn't because he was afraid of the king's anger. He didn't let anything stop him. That's because he saw the God who can't be seen. Because of his faith, Moses was the first to keep the Passover feast. He commanded the people of Israel to sprinkle blood on their doorways. He did it so that the destroying angel would not touch their oldest sons. The people of Israel had faith, so they passed through the Red Sea. They went through it as if it were dry land. The Egyptians tried to do it also, but they drowned. Israel's army had faith, so the walls of Jericho fell down. It happened after they had marched around the city for seven days. Rahab the prostitute had faith, so she welcomed the spies. That's why she wasn't killed with those who didn't obey God. What more can I say? I don't have time to tell about all the others. I don't have time to talk about Gideon, Barak, Samson or Jephthah. I don't have time to tell about David and Samuel and the prophets. Because of their faith, they took over kings. They ruled fairly. They received the blessings God had promised. They shut the mouths of lions. They put out great fires. They escaped being killed by swords. Their weakness was turned into strength. They became powerful in battle. They beat back armies from other countries. Women received back from the dead. Back their dead. The dead were raised to life again. They were, there were others who were made to suffer greatly, but they refused to be set free. They did this so that after death they would be raised to an even better life. Some were made some even made some were made fun of and even whipped. Some were held by trains. Some were put in prison. Some were killed with stones. Some were sword in two. Some were killed by swords. They went around wearing the skins of sheep and goats. They were poor. They were attacked. They were treated badly. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains. They lived in caves. They lived in holes in the ground. All these people were praised because of their because they had faith. But none of them received what God had promised. And that's because God had planned something better for us. So they would only be made perfect together with us. Chapter 12. A huge cloud of witnesses is all around us. So let us throw off everything that stands in our way. Let us throw off any sin that holds on to us so tightly. And let us keep on running the race marked out for us. Let us keep looking. Let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started this journey of faith. And he is the one who completes the journey of faith. He paid no attention to the shame of the cross. He suffered there because of the joy he was looking forward to. Then he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He made it through these attacks by sins. So think about him. Then you won't get tired. You won't lose hope. You struggle against sin. But you have not yet fought to the point of spilling your blood. Have you completely forgotten this word of hope? It speaks to you as a father of his children. It says, My son, think of the Lord's training as important. Do not lose hope when he corrects you. <clears throat> the Lord trains the one he loves. He corrects everyone he accepts as his son. Put up with hard times. God uses them to train you. He is treating you as his children. What children are not trained by their parents? God trains all his children. 
But what if he doesn't train you? Then you are not really his children. You are not God's true sons and daughters at all. Besides, we have all had human fathers who trained us. We respected them for it. How much more should we be trained by the Father of Spirits and live? Our parents trained us for a little while. They did what they thought was best. But God trained us for our good. He does this so that so we may share in his holiness. No training seems pleasant at the time. In fact, it seems painful. But later on it produces a harvest of godliness and peace. It does this for those who have been trained by you. So put your hands to work. Strengthen your legs for the journey. Make level paths for your feet to walk on. And then those who have trouble walking won't be disabled. Instead, they will be healed. Try your best to live in peace with everyone. Try hard to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Be sure that no one misses out on God's grace. See to it that a bit of plant just doesn't grow up. If it does, it will cause trouble. And it will make many people impure. See to it that no one commits sexual sins. See to it that no one is godless like Esau. He sold the rights to what he would receive as the oldest son. He sold them for a single meal. As you know, after that he wanted to receive his father's blessing. But he was turned away. With tears he tried to get the blessing. But he couldn't change what he had done. You haven't come to a mountain that, can't be t that can be touched. You haven't come to a mountain burning with fire. You haven't come to darkness, gloom and storm. You haven't come to a blast from God's trumpet. You haven't come to a voice speaking to you. When people heard that voice long ago, it begged it not to say it. They begged it not to say anything more to. What God commanded was too much for them. He said, "If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be killed with stones." That sight was terrifying. Moses said, I am trembling with fear, but you have come to Mount Zion. You have come to the city of the living God. This is the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to a joyful gathering of angels. There are thousands and thousands of them. You have come to the church of God's people. God's first and only son is over all things. God's people share in what belongs to the son. Their Click names the are written in heaven. You have come to God, who is the judge of all people. You have come to the spirits of godly people who have been made perfect. You have come to Jesus. He is the go between of a new covenant. You have come to the sun called blood. It promises better things than the blood of Abel. Be sure that you don't say no to the one who speaks. People did not escape when they said no to the one who warned them on earth. And what if we turn away from the one who warned us from heaven? How much less will we escape? At that time his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised, once more I will shake the earth. I will also shake the heavens. The words once more point out that what can be shaken can be taken away. I'm talking about created things. And what can be then what can't be shaken will remain. We are receiving a kingdom that can't be shaken. So let us be thankful. Then we can worship God in a way that pleases Him. Let us honor Him with deep respect and wonder. Our God is like a fire that burns everything up. Chapter 13. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Don't forget to welcome outsiders. By doing that, some people have welcomed angels without knowing it. Keep on remembering those in prison. Do this as if you were together with them in prison. And remember those who are treated badly, as if you yourselves were suffering. All of you should honor marriage. You should keep the marriage bed pure. God will judge the, pe the person who commits our adultery. He will judge everyone who commits sexual sins. Don't be controlled by love for money. Be happy with what you have. God has said, 
I will never leave you. I will never desert you. So we can say both. The Lord helps me. I will not be afraid. What can be human beings do to me? Remember your leaders. They spoke God's word to you. Think about the results of their way of life. Copy their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, with today and forever. Don't let all kinds of strange teaching lead you astray. It is good that God's grace makes our hearts strong. Don't try to go strong by eating foods that the law requires. They have no value for the people who eat them. The priests who are Levites worship at the Holy Tent. But we have an altar that they have no right to eat from. The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy room. He brings their blood as a sin offering. But the bodies are burned outside the camp. Jesus also suffered outside the city gate. He suffered to make the people holy by spilling his own blood. So let us go to him outside the camp. Let us be willing to suffer the shame he suffered. Here we do not have a city that lasts, but we are looking for the city that is going to come. So let us never stop offering to God our praise through Jesus. Let us talk openly through our, about our faith in him. Then our words will be like an offering to God. Don't forget to do good. Don't forget to share with others. God is pleased with those kind of offerings. Trust in your leaders. Put yourselves under their authority. Do this because they keep watch over you. They know they are accountable to God for everything they do. Do so that their work will be a joy. If you make their work a heavy load, it won't do you any good. Pray to pray for us. We feel sure that we have done what is right. We desire to live as we should in every way. I beg you to pray that I may return to you soon. Our Lord Jesus is the great shepherd of our sheep, of the sheep. The God who gives peace brought him back from the dead. He did it because of the blood of the eternal covenant. Now may God supply you with everything good. Then you can do what he wants. May he do in us what is pleasing to him. He can do it only with the help of Jesus Christ. Give him glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I beg you to accept my word. It tells you to be faithful. Accept my word because I have written to you only a short letter. I want you to know that our brother Timothy has been set free. If he arrives soon, I will come with him to see you. Greet all, the, greet all your leaders. Greet all the Lord's people. The believers from Italy send you their greetings. May grace be with you all. Proverbs 21. In the Lord's hand, the king's heart is like a stream of water. The Lord directs it toward all those who please him. A person might think their own ways are right, but the Lord knows what they are thinking. Do what is right and fair. The Lord accepts that more than sacrifices. The proud eyes and hearts of sinful people are like fear not play. Those things produce nothing good. The plans of people who work hard succeed. You can be just as sure that those in a hurry will become poor. A fortune made by people who tell lies amounts to nothing and leads to death. The harmful thing that evil people do will drag them away. They refuse to do what is right. The path of those who are guilty is crooked, but the conduct of those who are not guilty is honest. It is better to live on a corner of a roof than to share a house with a nagging wife. Simple people long to do evil. They don't show their neighbours any mercy. When you punish someone who makes fun of others, Child's people get wise. By paying attention to wise people, the child just get knowledge. The blameless one knows where sins live, and he destroys them. Whoever refuses to listen to the cries of poor people will also cry out and not be answered. A secret gift calms down anger. A hidden favor softens great anger. When you do what is fair, you make only people glad. When you terrify those who do what is evil, Whoever leaves the path of understanding ends up with those who are dead. Anyone who loves pleasure will become poor. 
I know who loves wine and olive oil will never be rich. Evil people become the payment for setting godly people free. And those who aren't faithful are the payment for honest people. It is better to live in a desert than to live with a nagging wife who loves to argue. Wise people will store up the best food and olive oil. The foolish people eat up everything they have. Anyone who wants to be godly and loving finds life, success, and honor. A wise person can attack a strong city. They can pull down the place of safety its people trust in. Those who are careful about what they say keep themselves out of trouble. A power person is called a mocker. He thinks much too hardly of himself. Some people will die while they are still hungry. That's because their hands refuse to work. All day long they hunger for more. But godly people give without holding back. God hates sacrifices that are brought by evil people. He hates to even more when they bring them for the wrong reason. Witnesses who aren't honest will die. But anyone who listens carefully will be a successful witness. Simple people try to live as if they were bold. But honest people think about how they live. No wisdom why saying or plan can succeed against the world. You can prepare a horse for the day of battle. But the power to win comes from the Lord. Psalm 48 The Lord is great. He is really worthy of praise. Praise him in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Mount Zion is high and beautiful. It brings joy to everyone on earth. Mount Zion is like the highest parts of Mount Saphon. It is the city of the great king. God is there to keep it safe. He has shown himself to be like a fort to the city. Many kings joined forces. They entered it at Gerba. But when they saw Mount Zion, they were amazed. They ran away in terror. Trembling took hold of them. They felt pain like a woman giving birth. Lord, you destroyed them like ships of Tarshish that were torn apart by an east wind. What we have heard, we have also seen. We have seen it in the city of the Lord who rules over all. We have seen it in the city of our God. We have heard and seen that God makes it secure forever. God, inside your temple we think about your faithful love. God, your fame reaches from one end of the earth to the other. So people praise you from one end of the earth to the other. You use your power to do what is right. Mount Zion is filled with joy. The villagers of Judah are glad. That's because you judge fairly. Walk around, walk all around Zion. Count its towers. Think carefully about its outer walls. Just look at how safe it is. Then you can tell its people that God keeps them safe. This God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide to the very end. Now that's done, I shall now sing the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.